I could show you. Oh, excuse me. I could show you the the new Lego that I've got that I'm going to start building soon. Okay. Can, can we have a look at it later? Yes. All right. Okay. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Well, I'm uh, laughing. Uh, I've just been chatting to Adam. All oh, right. <laughs> See, this is... There I lost a chunk of time. <laughs> called dissociative identity disorder, commonly known as multiple personality disorder. When she is Helen, she appears like any other 35-year-old woman. So this is a good birthday surprise. Yeah. But she has several alter personalities that she can suddenly switch to at any moment. So if you could do Whoa. things... Whoa! Where are we? We're on the London Eye. Very high up. Looking at London. Do you know what that is over there? Big Ben. Yeah. And the Houses of Parliament. That's right. Whoa, that was a shock. <laughs> and while the other personalities are out, Helen has no idea what they get up to. See a long way, huh? Yeah. Helen hasn't always been like this. I've known her since we were eight. She was one of my best friends for many years, but we lost touch after leaving school. Twelve years later, I bumped into her on a train, and I was shocked when she told me she had this strange disorder. This is me and Helen at my 10th birthday party. She used to stay over at my house, and we'd have midnight feasts after my parents had gone to bed. She was popular, intelligent, and funny. I thought she had everything going for her. But shortly after she graduated, Helen developed her multiple personalities. Seeing her again after so many years, I couldn't believe how much she'd changed. We decided to make this film to try to uncover the mysteries of Helen's disorder. I wanted to find out what the hell had happened to my old school friend. Do you like cleaning? I don't mind. And who makes most of the mess? <sighs> um, William makes quite a bit of a mess. He's got so many toys, hasn't he? Because he gets... And then this is when I'm angry, I can go... Wow, get angry a lot. When I remember bad things I do sometimes. This is my birthday present in here from my mum. Mm. I know what it is. I can hear a little voice in my head. <laughs> Same. Mr William. <laughs> oh no. Mr. William. Hello, William. Do you live? Yeah. I remember you from St. Alphys. Do you? Yes. What do you remember? Cozy Corner. That's right. That's right, I remember Cozy Corner as well. Cozy Corner. This was the first time I met William. I was amazed that he reminded me so much of Helen as an eight-year-old. 
Cozy Corner was at the end of the playground where we would sneak off to kiss our boyfriends. I'd forgotten all about it. I, I used to do it, Mr. Happy. Oh, is that the original Mr. Happy? Yes, Mr. Happy. And I stayed at your house and Mr. Happy's eye fell off. That's right. And your daddy put it back on for me. Yeah. William took me back 30 years to when Helen and I used to talk in baby voices with that same doll. She would say, Mr. Happy's sad. And I would say, why is Mr. Happy sad? I wondered if the reason why Mr. Happy was sad when we were children could hold a clue to why Helen is like this today. I like Mr. Happy. But sometimes even Mr. Happy gets sad. Really? Yes. What do you do to cheer him up? Tickle him. <laughs> it's I get Mr. Tickle to come and tickle. Tickle, 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 tickle. When I was 14, I saw a child psychiatrist and I was always listening to the Who, Four Faces. And it says, I've got four of this, four of that, four of the other, and I don't know which one's me. So have you got your driving licence, Adam? No, <laughs> it keeps getting stuck there. I just really identified with this piece of music and it's almost, with hindsight, I had insights into the fact that I was multiple. Wow. wow did you see that yeah. one? I, I knew something was wrong, but I couldn't pinpoint it. And... Uh, I've got more than four faces. <laughs> There's William, who's six, and uh, William loves the Mr. Men. There's Adam, who's ten, who gets upset sometimes because he can't play outside with the other boys and girls. Then there's Alex, who's five, and Alex shoots at everybody and they go pow, 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 pow. It's quite wearing. After a while, it gets on your nerves. <laughs> then there's Brenda, who's... I'm not sure whether she's 13 or 14. She doesn't mince her words. <laughs> she and another personality of mine, Carl, who's 16, have both harmed me um, in the past. And... Uh, there's Jamie and Elizabeth, but uh, they don't appear as often. So there's seven. I've got seven this, I've got seven that, and I don't know which one is me. <laughs> They're all me. <laughs> That's why I'm so screwed up. <laughs> God. After my first few weeks with Helen, I had only met Adam and William. I still hadn't met Alex, Carl or Brenda. I wanted to know if these more sinister sounding personalities could help me unlock some of the dark secrets of Helen's past. There's some dark Are you going to wait for me? Getting to know my old school friend again with her multiple personalities, I saw how this strange disorder affected her day-to-day -day life. I don't think you're supposed to climb over the railing, actually. I wanted to know what it felt like to switch personalities. Are you traveling any cut, please? It's so Beautiful day, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> well, it was a bit bizarre <laughs> seeing um, the switching. 
people have told me that my facial expression changes and I'm, I know my voice changes because it I can hear my like when they talk to me their voice is kind of childlike but I didn't realize that it comes out childlike as well and it's just really bizarre <laughs> um, whilst I know when I switch well afterwards I don't know what I've been doing whereas you know this is kind of filled in the gaps be careful not to pour in the water. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I could be walking along the street and be anybody, and uh, it, it's kind of like makes me feel a bit vulnerable. These periods of amnesia are particularly alarming because Helen is very isolated. She has little contact with her family, and she only has one good friend. Derek. Socially, I don't feel very confident, and so consequently, then I live quite an isolated life. But I've lived alone since I was 17, anyway, so it's no big deal, really. I tend to relate better to people who are older than myself. That's a swallowtail butterfly, Helen. I met Derek four years ago. He's a highly intelligent bloke. And I found that we struck a chord in the sense that we could have some intelligent conversation. <laughs> Got a new friend. Yeah. <laughs> I just got to know him better and see him as a very vulnerable person who I, I care about a great deal as a friend. I had him round at Christmas because otherwise he would have spent it alone and I would have spent it alone and we had a good time, you know. Stay on me. Look, Derek. That's lovely, Adam. Great. <laughs> Look at that. Must be all of 30 years old, that one. 30? Almost as old as you, Helen. It's Adam. Sorry, love. Sorry, Adam. Adam. Sorry, love. Adam can be quite assertive and lively at times, but on other days I saw a quite different, subdued little boy. I soon learned how to lift his spirits, and I knew exactly where to take him. I would have liked to have gone for a bike ride, but my tyre's flat. Sometimes I just wish that I had some friends I could play with, but they don't see me as Adam, they see me as Helen. <laughs> I don't want to go on that, that's for babies. Oh, I'm right, going on the slide. I know I haven't got a willy, but just because I haven't got a willy and I'm not a boy doesn't mean that I can't be friends with people. <laughs> Sometimes I come out to protect Helen from the baddies. But other times I come out to play. <laughs> Oops. Oh. oh, are you all right, sweet? Are you yeah. okay? Did you fall on something? My arm. Where? I'm intoxicated there with alcohol and yet I don't drink so one of the altars must have been drinking and that annoys me. You're right, babe. Yeah. yeah. It's worrying to see that because I could walk out in front of a bus. I wasn't surprised to learn that Helen is now a recovering alcoholic. 
I remember going into town after school to drink booze that Helen had brought because she didn't want to go straight home. For me, it was a bit of harmless fun, but Helen was becoming more and more withdrawn. We decided to visit our old form tutor, Mr. Faulkner, to see if he remembered anything significant about Helen. My goodness. Hello. You've hardly changed. You have hardly changed. <sighs> it's lovely to see you. How are you? Oh, come on. I'm not happy with people have. <laughs> you, you, I, I would have, I would have recognised you straight away. Would you? I really would, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it feels really strange, doesn't it? It does. It yeah. does, yeah. Have you not, have you not you presumably you've not been back here since you, you left? No. 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 Oh, someone else is going to come out in a minute. Oh, no. <laughs> then, as Ruth explained to yeah. you about yeah. multiple people. She's talked a lot, yeah. 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 Then, um... Hello. Are you Mr Faulkner? School. That's right. We're in the school now. Mm -hmm. This room wasn't here when you were here at school. Where is it? This used to be a cloakroom. It was, a, it was an open space. All these walls you can see weren't here. They were elsewhere. It looks a bit different though, doesn't it? Well, that's right. No, I didn't have a beard when you would have known me. I had my moustache. That's right. <laughs> I, can see, I can see a point in the moustache, yeah. but I didn't have this. Remember what we used to call him? Tash. Tash, thank you. <laughs> well, I learn all these things afterwards, you know. But never <laughs> at the time. <laughs> Tashy. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think I, actually, no, I think I do remember that, yes, yeah. Hello, Helen. Hi. Adam just came out to say hi. All right. <laughs> Sorry. No, don't. You have to apologise. Ruth, Ruth explained everything to me. <sighs> so would you like to have a look around? Like Helen was lovely. She's a really pretty girl, really vivacious, you know, a, 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 a charming lass. Um, but at times you, 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 you couldn't, you didn't know where you were. You know, like, like um, she wasn't predictable. There were times when she'd be lovely and bouncy and, and lively, and other times when the shutters would come up and you couldn't get through. I knew there were troubles for Helen because of discussions that had gone on in the staff room. But my understanding was that this was being dealt with by someone else within the school and that it was going to work out OK for Helen. I also thought things would work out for Helen, but her condition means she's unable to hold down a full-time job. She lives in a council flat and survives on benefits. Conventional medicine doesn't offer any solutions. There are no drugs to cure DID, only to control the symptoms. These are Prozac, which is a, an antidepressant, and I'm on the highest dose, which is 60 milligram. I've been taking those for 14 years. They help keep my mood on an even keel. And I take diazepam, which is Valium. The Valium just calm me down and keep me chilled out. <laughs> these are olanzapine. They're an antipsychotic. Then these, the last one, the Zopiclone, which is a sleeping tablet. A lot of the tablets give me heartburn, so I've got <coughs> loads of bottles of Gaviscon. These are just Lemsips and Migraleev and... <laughs> Light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> it was upsetting to see Helen taking so many pills. I wanted to know what was going on inside her head. She gave me her diaries from when her alters first appeared. I thought that they might hold the key to discovering how her multiple personalities had been formed. I saw some disturbing pictures and noticed that each personality had different handwriting. It was chilling to see some of the dialogue between the different alters. I read page after page describing the pain Helen was suffering. One entry particularly caught my attention. The sun is shining outside and I'm feeling really low. Part of me feels like overdosing, but I know that the next one might kill me and I don't want that. I just want to block it all out. 
Carl. I've overdosed about 100 times. It was not me as Helen, it was Brenda or Carl that was doing it. And it wasn't ever to kill myself, it was to block out pain. Helen and her alters wrote about the pain that they were going through, but it still wasn't clear to me exactly what the root of this pain was. I cut my arm because Zach was shouting and screaming and I was remembering bad things and needed to get it out. I'm sorry if I hurt you, it's not my fault because I've got lots of bad things in my head. Brenda. Carl and Brenda started cutting myself and there's some new scars here but some old ones as well. I cut an artery once and that scared the living daylights out of me. It's been virtually continual cutting myself for the last ooh, 10 years. It was distressing to see the scars on her arms. It triggered a memory I had of Helen making two small cuts on each wrist when we were about 15. I kept asking her what was wrong, but she wouldn't say. When I picked her up from hospital after one of her alters had cut her arms, it saddened me. She seemed to have no control over the more troubled personalities, like Carl, Brenda and Alex, who all seemed to be avoiding me. And the cutting, is that who... Oh, that was Carl as well, right? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. I don't know for definite. Mm -hmm. Nobody's confessed. <laughs> 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 Hi, Ruth. Hey, Adam. Hello, Ruth. Hi. How are you? I'm alright. Good. What's going on? I'm, I'm back home. Yeah. <laughs> nice, isn't it? Yeah. Do you like my bird? The bird? Yeah. Let's see. Are you filming? I am, yeah. I don't, as Helen, go out and buy razor blades to cut my arms with. It's another part of me and they must hide them somewhere. But it's very rare that I ever found any. <laughs> Oh, shit! It must be one of the others. Because I can say hand on heart that I haven't drunk knowingly for 14 months. Who do you think that was? Probably Brenda or maybe Carl. I couldn't understand why Helen's personalities abused alcohol or harmed her so much. I needed to know what could have caused my friend so much pain. Well, I was severely abused as a child. Um, and I cope with that by blocking it out. So that's why you never knew anything about it and I never knew anything about it because what I did was create um, different personas when I was being abused and so I could wake up as Helen the next morning and not remember what had happened to me. And I carried on doing that um, as, the, as the abuse continued. And so that's where the multiple personalities come in. Pretty major. Yeah. Yeah. It was awful to think what Helen might have been going through when we were so young. I had to know if this could be the reason that Helen had the disorder, so I showed some of my footage to a respected psychiatrist. The main problem about dissociative identity disorder 
as regarding our knowledge about it, is almost the whole thing. We don't know very much about it at all. Uh, but the ideas that you know, I've read about, and that certainly would seem to me to fit, are that uh, a person who has to suffer intolerable distress will have to find a way of dealing with that, and find a defense mechanism of some power. So it can be that you, as it were, split your mind, maybe initially just into two parts, the bit that faces the world and the bit that it lives inside you, that you feel safe, that makes you feel safe. I was still struggling to understand why Helen's personalities hurt her if they are supposed to be created to help her when I finally met the elusive Carl. How old are you? 16. And I'm a cool dude. I would appreciate knowing who cut my arms yesterday and why. And the same goes with regard to taking of any pills. All of this upsets me a great deal. Why do you do it? Why? Helen. Why do you do it? Because it's easier to feel physical pain than it is emotional pain. And what does Helen think about that? I think she understands, but she doesn't like the fact that her arms have been cut to shreds. Dear Helen, I'm sorry it was me. But it was either that or taking the tablets. I cut because I hurt inside and I felt desperate. I'm scared if I say what happened, people will think I'm evil. In like what we call the team, one of my roles is to have some escapism. And I've learned not to do it dangerously now. Like, it used to be pills and it used to be alcohol, it used to be drugs and stuff, you know, but... Um... Sorry, I can hear William talking in my head. <laughs> um... What's he saying? He's just saying hello. Mr Happy says hello. I wanted to know more about what might have happened to Helen when we were children. But what I found out next was almost too horrific to contemplate. Helen told me she had created her multiple personalities whilst enduring severe abuse as a child. But it bothered me that she herself had no memories of what might have happened or who might have been responsible. To my horror, I discovered that many people with Helen's disorder believe that they suffered ritual abuse at the hands of a satanic cult. I couldn't believe that Satanist abuse actually goes on in our society. Helen told me she knew of a psychiatrist who has been working with DID sufferers with these kinds of memories for 13 years, so I thought I should go and meet her. I, I can understand people being skeptical, but once you've come across it, once you've seen somebody as different alters, reliving the memories and experiencing the pain all over again. There's no mistaking it. A lot of child abuse is either sexual or physical or emotional and psychological. Well, Satanist abuse is all. There's torture, a lot of sexual abuse. It's not just a one-off trauma, it's um, a relentless day-to-day -day prolonged trauma. If it's generational, it starts at a very early age, often in babyhood, uh, and so it would fit all the criteria for causing DID. I still couldn't believe that such atrocities could have happened to Helen in our middle-class suburban town. I discovered that there have never been any proven cases of satanic abuse in Britain, but Joan Coleman is convinced that the cults exist, and so is Helen. I wondered how Helen had felt when she first sensed something awful might have happened to her. I hurt a lot inside. I, I, I had not fully fledged memories, but I was having flashbacks of, of something that was not very pleasant. It was almost like a cine film in my mind, and it would just flash by each caption. 
and I couldn't piece anything together. At first, I was actually diagnosed schizophrenic. I was losing chunks of time and gradually more little people came out. Um, little uh, people. <laughs> yes, little people. <laughs> I just thought I was going crazy, basically. Initially, Alex came out and was shooting at everybody. Then William came out. Then I remember Brenda entering to my head and I thought, I hate the name Brenda, why the, what's the name Brenda got in my head for? <laughs> and uh, she was a bit feisty. And, um, hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Are you Brenda? Yeah. Hi Brenda. Hi. We meet at last. Yeah. Are you doing so some filming? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> what have you heard about me? Is it all good, I hope? Oh, all good. <laughs> I heard you're very feisty. Very feisty. Yeah. What's feisty mean? The cute, giggly Brenda wasn't quite what I expected. She reminded me of Helen as a young teenager. I wanted to know what memories she had about what might have happened to Helen when we were still at school. I remember some really crappy things. One of my abusers got me pregnant and Helen was 16 at the time and um, I Sorry, it's hard to talk about. Then I um, remember having to having the f the fetus or the what the embryo um, aborted and making being made to eat it. convincing account of what she claimed to have been through, I felt I might be starting to understand why Helen's mind had created the other personalities. But then I came across the British False Memory Society, and I discovered that there are many eminent psychologists who have a totally conflicting theory. I came to the inescapable conclusion that multiple personality disorder is an iatrogenic phenomenon. That is to say, it is a creature of the consulting room, something which patient and therapist, both with all sincerity, uh, but in a completely self-deceived way, something which these two individuals manufacture, it's a theatrical artifact. It is no more than an elaborate role play. I could show you, oh, excuse me, I could show you the the new Lego that I've got that I'm going to start building soon. OK, can we have a look at it later? Yes. All right. OK. <laughs> There's no way that I could <laughs> consistently speak in a childlike mode. I don't see how you can do it. I mean, would you be able to? I know there's research that says that DID patients are very suggestible. None of my therapists have ever planted any memory 
it's been a process whereby things have come out and have caused turmoil, but there's, there's no way anyone's planted anything in my head. Not so far as I'm concerned, anyway. If they have, I'm oblivious to it. <laughs> when something awful happens, we do not forget. We remember trauma. There's no evidence at all in the scientific literature for the Freudian notion of repression. We do not forget unpleasant things and bury them in some unconscious. I didn't know what to think. It's true that Helen had a lot of controversial therapy, but to Brenda, the memories had seemed so real. It bothered me that the False Memory Society was a campaign group with its own agenda. It was all getting very confusing for me. It was even more confusing for Helen. I'm trying really hard to understand what's going on at the moment. I'm fast reaching the point whereby I know I'm going to have to talk about some things and hear things that are going to be unpleasant but I'm scared inside and can't seem to take the courage in both hands. Helen. What do you think you're scared of? I'm scared of facing the truth of what happened to me. I'm fed up, I've got bad things in my head. I keep being super Adam because I want to be strong. Super Adam, super Adam, go away. Go away! Nobody can hurt me now, Adam. These are my diaries. Yeah, I know. Helen was just reading it out. I'm I mean. super Adam. Super Adam. I know that the abuse was severe, Probably and my therapist confirmed that for me. It, in the end, I had to say to my therapist, you know, like, Am I crazy or are these, you know, real, real memories? And she said, only you can tell me whether, they, whether they're memories, but are you not going crazy? And so I deduced from that then, <laughs> then the memories were real. I still had so many questions. Was she abused and if so, by whom? Could she really have been the victim of a satanic cult? Or could the memories and the alter personalities have been created in therapy? I've got a headache. Maybe there's a third possibility. Maybe she was abused, but not in a satanic cult. But then, where are those memories? After spending so much time with Helen, I realised that none of this really matters. This is Helen's reality. This is how she leads her life, and it is not always easy. I feel sick. Do you? Yes. Oh, why? I don't know. Do you think you're going to be sick? Yes. Really? At times, there can be some very amusing things that happen. But at other times, you know, like, for example, when I'm in pain and I hear a child inside me cry, the experience is so real of having a child crying in my head and knowing that the child is invisible, but it's actually part of me, and not being able to console that child. That's difficult, and that makes it a difficult condition to live with. I want a story. <laughs> Living with her multiple personalities is not easy for Helen, so I decided to treat her to a special birthday outing to London. William, Brenda and Carl didn't appear that day, and I wondered if I would ever get to meet Alex. I ended up spending most of the day with Adam, so I had no choice but to ditch my plans for the Natural History Museum and go somewhere a lot more interesting instead. What does that say up there? Hi, Miss! Hi, Miss! Hi, Miss! <laughs> yeah! 
that's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. Twenty-two ninety-nine. I might get that. I'll, I think I'll get that. Yeah. Wow. Adam cost me a fortune in Lego, but I feel very close to Adam. It's like Adam allows me to have the childhood that I don't remember having. How much is he? Doesn't it say on the on the label? I have to ask. Okay, it's four ninety nine. Four ninety nine. Yeah, cheap, isn't it? Wow, it's, right, it's a bargain. It? <laughs> yeah, it certainly is. Hello. Hello. All right. Are you having a nice birthday, Helen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what have we been doing? What's the time? Well, we've had a McDonald's and we've been to the Harry Potter platform. Harry Potter platform? Yeah. Helen appeared briefly, so I grabbed the opportunity to wish her a happy birthday. I'd planned a day full of surprises for her, and I even so got I a little surprise stuff. myself. Who are you? Alex. Hello, Alex. We're in a taxi in London going to another surprise. To a surprise? Yes. Where are we going? A surprise. <laughs> are There was Very never a dull true. moment hanging out with Helen, but Happy I did wonder birthday. if she'd ever get better, Happy if she could go Alex. back to being one person Happy with one personality. Healing for somebody with dissociative identity disorder means more than just curing the symptoms or somehow reintegrating all the different personalities into one. That would seem to be the obvious goal of treatment, but uh, I think we need to think in terms of a person being able to live with whatever they're suffering from and recognising that it's actually a way that nature has provided you with getting by. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. It's a tricky issue really, the issue of integration, but um, I used to be really, really anti-integration, whereas now I'm, I, I don't mind certain personalities being integrated, and some of them are, um, but um, William, Adam and Alex, I'd like to keep hold of really. Especially Adam, because Adam's seen me through some tough times, and I'd miss his little voice in my head. I'd, I'd miss all of their voices in my head. It's kind of like bizarre because at the beginning I was having all these voices in my head and I, I, I think, what the hell's going on, you know, and I thought I was going mad. Basically, it's the back wheel that's got the puncture. And that it would be easier to be mad than to have this condition called multiple personality disorder. And how the hell can you have multiple personalities in the same body? Back in the my bike. But then sort of 
I've kind of moved on, accepted that, accepted the diagnosis, um, and gradually got to know my inner self. Thanks a lot. People like Adam and William and Alex. They're, the, they're like the childlike parts of me. And I, I don't know, I just, I, I, don't, I don't want full integration. wish that her personalities would stop harming her and that her scars will heal both inside and out. I'm glad our paths crossed again. Helen is just as lovely as I remember and I even gained a few more little friends along the way. I I Adam, 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 and then I come out. Is that yours or Adam's? Mine. Is it? Yeah. Would Adam say that? I don't know. Am I allowed to buy a bottle of gin? I don't think so, Brenda. It's quite nice for the green peppers, isn't it? It's very peanutty, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's good. It's peanut soup. They always say disassociation, and it's not bloody disassociation, it's dissociation. You feel me? I know. <laughs> Just playing with my toys. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow is after all another day. Tomorrow